Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna look at the Aqua Blend color pencils. They're brand new from Spectrum Noir. I heard a rumor that these were coming out um, last year, like the end towards the end of last year, and they debuted them at CHA, and I finally got a set. Um, so these, I'm pretty excited. I actually got them yesterday, and I swatched them out onto some watercolor paper, and you can see the colors are nice and vibrant. These cost the regular retail on these is um, like $29.95. I'm sorry, $39.95, but Hallmark Scrapbook has them for $29.95 for the 24 sets. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, so they are, you know, very, you know, price competitive. Now it's like, for instance, this is a Derwent watercolor pencils, and this is the Aqua Blend swatched out. This is the um, primaries, which I think is the most versatile, uh, and the naturals, and then this is the florals and the essentials. So just depending on what you want to paint would determine what colors you'd want. And if you want the entire set, there are no duplicates, and um, 96 colors in all, and that's 114 at Hallmark Scrapbook. I think it's like 150 or something um, retail. So they do have some good deals, and I'm a Hallmark Scrapbook affiliate. I will let you know that if you click on the links in the video description and order, I do get a small percentage of that. Um, so I wanted to show you here, because I showed you the Derwent swatch. It's um, so like 24 of the Derwent watercolors is retail $51.99 versus $39.95, you know, for regular retail. And, you know, of course, Albright drawers, they always run higher um, at $64.50 for 24. And Prismacolors, which I've tried a few of those. I wasn't happy with the Prismacolor ones. Those are $44.14. So the Aqua Blend under regular retail situations is definitely the, um, the most economical. And I was very pleased with the colors. Now, I swatched them out. There was only two pencils in the entire line that did not liquefy immediately when I put water to them, and that were these, um, the deep forest green and the, I think it was jungle green. Those two, you can see that there's some uh, marks from where I colored them in, so I think I would use these colors for like veining on leaves and then kind of color over with um, one of these other greens and then liquefy it, so I would actually keep the veining, so I would just use that to my advantage. So over here what I did was I wet my brush and then I picked up color from the tips of the pencils just to see. And the thing that I noticed here that I don't notice with many watercolor pencils is the granulation. Like, so they are almost looking more like tube watercolors because of the beautiful granulation. So here, so, okay, so like right there, the, the, those two rows, that's what's in the um, primary set, and I was noticing there really wasn't any browns, there wasn't any purples, so I decided to mix some of the colors just by kind of overlapping the colors and washing over them, make some beautiful purples, beautiful browns, this was like with red, yellow, and blue brown, this was with green and red. Um, made some nice earthy greens. So the primary set is really nice. They mix out really cleanly, and if you wanted to start with one set to see if you like them, that would be what I'd recommend. Since they don't duplicate between the sets, that's great. You could buy the primaries, try them out. If you don't like them, okay. If you love them, then you can buy the other three sets and not worry about duplicating with the other brands of pencils if you buy like a set of 12 and then you love them and you go and buy a larger set, you're gonna have those same 12 colors duplicated and it's kind of a waste. Um, so that's something I love across the whole Spectrum Noir and Spectrum Aqua line. So let's do a little project with them. I really like this stamp set here. It's a fl flowers, flowers are fun to color. And I wanted to do a no line watercoloring technique. So what I'm gonna do is um, stamp. And the nice thing about these stamps is they actually come with um, stencils. And I'm actually gonna use the inner part of the stencils as a mask so I don't have to cut a mask. Now I'm gonna have to do something like write on it with a Sharpie so I don't lose it after after I'm done here. That's why I've been so afraid to take them out of the, um, to pop apart the stencil because I'm afraid of losing the uh, the mask. But I want to do a no line watercoloring technique. So what I'm going to do is actually use my Spectrum Aqua markers because I think you should always use what you already have in conjunction with um, with your new products because it just makes it makes it more versatile. When you can add something new to your stash, it should make all your other stuff more versatile, not obsolete. You shouldn't say, "Oh, I got these. I'm never going to use." you know, that product anymore. It should be the opposite. It should make it more uh, more useful. And I'm just stamping right onto a pad of Canson um, XL watercolor paper. It was like $5 a pad at uh, my local uh, craft store. So look at that, great impression. I will put a link to these as well. I've got to let that set up just a second before I can, um, before I can stamp. So why don't I figure out what I want to use for my colors? while I'm doing that. And I think I'll probably stick to the primaries just because there's such a really lovely line in there. And let's go with this first red. I swatched them out. I didn't write their names down. 
I'm just going to see how that one's going to do, kind of get my ideas of what I want to use while that's drying. I am going to use a water brush. Uh, this is the one of the Prima rounds. It comes in the uh, the two pack. Okay, I like those colors. As you can see, it's going to fade and blend down. That would be really well with that. And let's see if those color names match. This is the Scarlet Marker. By the way, this is the first time I'm using these other than to uh, swatch them out. Then this is Red Berry. So those are the two colors I have so far. And now let's see. That's, that seems to be pretty dry. Fairly dry, dry enough. I'm going to put the uh, the mask on top, and I'm going to stamp. Um, I think I'm going to stamp some leaves. So I've got this right here, and I'm going to do that in moss green. Now, one thing I did notice is that the color representation on the pencils is quite accurate. So that's the other reason I didn't bother writing out my um, my colors on my swatch. Sometimes they're not accurate and you really need that swatch handy. I probably will go in with like a sharpie and you know a fine tip sharpie or pen and just write what the names are but, um, but I don't really feel like I absolutely have to. I figure out where I want these leaves. I think I want one. So I'm stamping right over my, my mask there. Hopefully I don't have too much of a halo. Oh, look at that, perfect. And that's what I love. I love that I don't have to cut a mask on these. Uh, some of these Stampendous ones, look for ones with like the little orange in the corner because they come with a free stencil. They all, you can also get dies to match. I don't have dies to match this set because um, I often just kind of just kind of do them on like a background like this. I just trim it out into a rectangle. I don't um, I don't cut and layer it but you know we all craft differently so if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get a die to match <laughs> it's gonna I gotta make sure that I'm really gonna use it you know that it's not just gonna sit there and I think I'll do this one over here. A little tip, I like to pull my stencil back just a, just a touch so it's kind of like on the inside of my line just so that I don't have a, a gap between the uh, the items. Now I also want to put the jar in. I'm going to do that right now. Don't mind my bathrobe. It's like Saturday morning and um, I'm just sneaking down here to get a little stamping in before the whole family is up and running around. You probably will hear some running around. So for this I'm actually going to use that same moss green that I already used and I'm going to ink up my um, my stems in there with that. That'll just save me a little time later. And I'm going to go in with this um, aquamarine and do the sides of the jar. So the, when you're doing a no line watercolor technique, um, it's kind. It kind of is going to look like you just painted it freehand, and that's kind of a fun technique to do with stamps, especially if you're getting used to watercoloring or getting used to watercolor pencils, because that's one less thing for you to worry about. So I'm just making sure I'm holding that because it doesn't have any sticky on it. And oh, my finger's in the way, darn it. Hopefully this isn't too crooked. I feel like I stamped it a little crooked. That's not too bad, actually. Okay, great. So I'm hopefully not going to lose that. I'm going to set that. I'm going to set it right underneath my stamp block, and hopefully that will keep me from losing any of those pieces. And I'm going to try um, some of those. You know, I kind of. You see, I kind of want to get into the uh, into the natural set, but I'm thinking, you know what? I know I can mix because that's a pretty color. So I just got to remember what I used for those colors. Um, I think I'm going to use um, that nice bright green, um, and then I think I'm going to use one of the yellows and one of the blues to to do the mixing. So let's grab those colors just so I have them. And I will swatch them out just to double check over here. I generally wouldn't waste this much paper um, doing that, but I want to make sure that you kind of get the gist of mixing and all that good stuff. So I think what I did was I used that yellow and this blue. So that way they're not super close to each other on the color wheel, so they should give me a nice earthy color when I mix them out. Oh yeah, isn't that pretty? It's just like a sap green. Isn't that lovely? Love it. I'm really pleased with these pencils, you know, so many craft companies come out with products that aren't very good. Um, you know, they're more of a, even like a ch children's grade than a craft grade, and I'm glad that these are nice. Okay, so do I want any more flowers in there? Um, I'm thinking maybe, maybe, you know what? I think I'm just going to stick with this because I know I can get that done fairly soon. I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to color this together. Now, since I'm working on watercolor paper and I've got watercolor markers, my stamping lines will actually um, meld out a little bit, and that's totally fine. I am good. Oh, I also want a nice light blue for the uh, for the jar. I'm gonna go with this blue right here. And um, like I said, they're gonna they're gonna meld really well. So you don't have to be too particular on how you color. But it's always a good idea to go lightly, especially when you want a really transparent look. 
um, and you don't want to scra scratch the paper or scribe the paper otherwise you will definitely get lines even though everything did wash out really well it's just good to keep in mind and I think I will just do a little bit of green on those and to darken that because I don't want it to be really really bright inside of the glass jar because it would be a little bit darker looking I'm just gonna go over with a little bit of blue so all the colors I'm using here are from the um, the primary set which I recommend your first one to get but if you do want to save some money if you buy all four you can get this all four sets for 114 and uh, you can get free shipping I'm just cleaning off my brush by scribbling it over to the side all right so um, I'm gonna go right up to the line and let some of that line meld out if I want since I use such a light touch with a pencil it's giving me a super super light color now if I want to gently add some color like to the edges while it's still wet and just kind of let it flow what I'm gonna do is just pick up the color from the tip of my pencil so I'm kind of using this like a pan of watercolor and then I can go right up to the edge and just drag it down and really just put little bits of little touches of color you can always go back and add more with watercolors which is nice it's not like you've got you know sometimes when you have your when you're working with markers they kind of stain the paper and you can't get right back in I find that you have a lot of versatility with watercolor pencils somebody just asked me the other day if I what's my favorite coloring medium I was like I don't know and then I was like well probably watercolor pencils so I'm gonna scribble off the extra which I typically do with a paper towel so that I didn't you know waste watercolor paper and then I'm gonna go in with these greens just kind of liquefy those I don't care if they're a little uh, a little blurry in the jar I think that's kind of part of the charm and then I'll even pick up some of that color and add it elsewhere just so I get those reflections because when you're dealing with water you'll have any of these colors can show up in there alright so let me just show you one trick that's really kind of fun before we go on um, let's say and I'll do this in the center where the flower would generally be lighter let's say all I had was markers and I just wanted to use my markers look at that that looks pretty just on its own even without any watercolor any watercolor pencil so that's a technique you can do if you just have watercolor markers even if all you have is Crayola markers from like your kids you know art stash use what you have these are awesome if you want to buy them if you um, have money in the budget for them I love that you can just get one set and if you like them buy more but don't let it stop you if you if you know all you have is a box of kids markers use them I never want anybody to go into debt for craft supplies use what you have and um, if you are looking for decent pencils these are these are really great oh something else I want to do um, I want to drag well this will be fine my, my pen was a little dirty but that's alright I want to drag a reflection out onto the table that's sitting on I want it to be very uh, oops that's not even the right blue but that's alright because I'm going to use that somewhere else I want to add some of that color drag it out so I get that nice reflection I can add a little bit of green in there any of the colors I'm using I'm only using a few so I'm totally fine adding those anywhere in the uh, in the picture here add a little bit of that just a touch of the red not a ton just even blotting it off a little bit it's all fair game oh this is fun I love it when I have a fun little project to share and again you know if you have another brand of pencil use those you don't have to run out and buy every single thing that comes along I know it's awful fun to try though isn't it so I'm just gonna liquefy the color I just put in and drag it out to the edge you probably can hear some murmuring upstairs I think I think the kids are chit chatting we're going to a humane basketball game later today that should be fun so what I'm doing is just kind of liquefying and then I'm gonna wipe my brush off because I'll have too much pigment on and then I won't be able to see the dark in the light so I'm just kind of scribbling again do it on a paper towel don't waste your watercolor paper you don't do what I'm doing <laughs> and I'm being really loose about this and it's 
it's fine it's really easy to blend now there were some really pretty pinks in the um in the floral set and purples in the floral set so if you do love to do a lot of florals you might want to consider that this this one is, is a little smaller so i didn't put so much pencil on it and there's plenty of ink in the spectrum aqua marker that i use there so i don't really feel like i needed to if i want to have a little bit more of a shadow over here because those two flowers are overlapping that i'll simply go back to my my pencil use it like a pan of color pick it up on the tip. I like how pointy this is. This is the um, the smaller of the two brushes that are in the Prima round set. I have to say, I just tried the flat set. The flat set was not for me. I like, I like round brushes anyway. I find them a lot more useful in this situation as well, especially stamped images. Um, I would probably rather just have a big bucket and a big flat brush, regular watercolor brush. Um, that's my personal, my personal preference. Now on this one, I'm going to try going out to the edge first and just softening those edges wiping off the extra marker color as I go. Look how pretty this would be for Mother's Day. I, I really, I really enjoy these. These are fun. Now, let's say that this is too bright. You're like, oh my gosh, this is way too bright. I didn't want it that bright. What am I going to do, Lindsay? Well, you're going to take a paper towel and you're going to press and lighten it right up. Okay, so don't never freak. You know, every time you are creating, it is an opportunity to learn. If you don't make mistakes, you're not going to learn anything, first of all. And now if I want to darken that one in back there, give it a little bit of a shadow and depth, I'll pick up the color from my stick here, from my crayon, uh, pencil rather, and just kind of go in there and add that depth back in. You could go over it with like uh, a sparkly pen if you want to, like a Wink of Stella. You can even blend them with a Wink of Stella if you want to. Because, um, like I said, your materials when you add something new to your stash, it should make all your other materials more valuable, not obsolete. All right, so now let's color the leaves. I want to do something fun here. I want to mix my colors. So I'm going to go in first with my dark. I'm going to go in with my blue. And this is deep blue. Go and add shadows here. I think I would have, I, now that I look at those flowers, I wish I did them in one of the purples or one of the pinks because they do look really bright, but that's all right. Live and learn. It's still pretty. Okay, then I'm going to go in with uh, my yellow. I'm going to go over the entire thing with my yellow. And I'm coloring really quickly. Take your time. Crafting is fun. I'm trying not to take up too much of your time <laughs> so I'm trying to go a little quickly and then I'm going in with the green I got to be careful though because I did use water on this green so sometimes it will deposit too much pigment if the if the stick is wet it's best to color when the when the pencils are dry all right make sure my brush is clean and I'm going to start with my lightest area just because I'm afraid that once I get into the shadow it's going to get too dark and work my way down to the shadow. Look at that nice blending. And I didn't use that much pigment. You, if you wanted it darker, use more pigment. I felt like I used a little too much there on the reds because the red pigment was so strong. But I did find these were very high pigment, highly pigmented. I have no idea about light fastness. Generally, um, pencils, markers, unless you're buying like the super artist grade from like art artist companies, um, you can't really, you don't really find that information. So if anyone has done a test on these, please let me know in the comments below. Generally though, it, when I'm using watercolor pencils, I'm doing cards um, or I'm just adding accents to paintings and it doesn't seem to, I, I haven't had any problem with, with um, actually any of my watercolor pencils fading. So just to let you know that, but I wouldn't go out on a limb and say and, and speculate the light fastness of this or any other product, but there you go. It's pretty easy. Look at the range we got with um, five pencils, all from the Essential or the Primaries line. Let me just show you that. Um, I'm going to show you the swatches again so that you can decide what you would prefer if you're going to begin with a with a set. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see that well. So again, these two strips here are the colors. These are some I mixed just to see if I could get them. Um, these are the colors in the natural set, beautiful blues and greens and browns. And then I just did kind of like a spectrum mixing there just to see how well they looked very natural. Um, these are the florals, super heavy in pinks and purples, almost like, you know, blindingly pinks and purples. So if you like those colors, it's a great set. Or if you want to add it, because often you don't have a lot of pinks and purples in a, in a colored pencil range. And I think it's because those tend to be the most fugitive or fading colors. That could be why. So you 
might want to avoid these if archival ability is a goal. I'm not saying these aren't archival or these aren't um, light fast. That's just in the past, usually your fuchsias and your purples are not as archival. And then the essentials over here are all your beautiful skin tones, hair tones, and gray tones. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful in deciding your um, next craft purchase. Um, and all the links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.